Hey, GED students. Um, I had uh, one of your fellow students um, email me or message me that she was struggling with some of the multi-step equations problem from the experience practice. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. So I'm going to do number 13 here. It says 30 is equal to half of h uh, times the quantity of 2 plus 7. So this particular practice, the experience level practice, if you've gotten to try it, um, I basically am helping you to practice for the type of problems we're going to end up doing in geometry when you use formulas. So this is what it'll, it'll end up looking like a lot of the times. This particular one is what you'll see if you end up using the area of a trapezoid formula. But you don't have to know any of that. All you have to know is this one basic rule, which is um, simplify before you start solving. So basically, do any forwards math, obey any operations that you know how to obey before you start um, isolating the variable, before you start working to get the letter alone. Okay, so I see some math that I know how to do. I see uh, 2 plus 7 is something I totally know how to do, so 2 plus 7 is 9. And now I'm going to drop everything from above that I haven't dealt with yet. I haven't dealt with the 30s, the equals, the half, or the h. Now, take a look at this 9 that we have here. What is this 9 doing? Well, notice that this 9 was came from 2 plus 7 in parentheses, all shoved up against that h. So that 9 is multiplying. In fact, all three of these numbers are multiplying. 1 half times h times 9. And we've talked about it before, but we'll talk about it again. You're allowed to um, group any way you want in multiplying. If you just have three numbers multiplying, you can take any two of them and multiply them together. And so I'm going to use that, and I'm just going to take half of h. No, or I'm sorry, half of 9. Now, a lot of students are like, Kate, I don't know what half of 9 is. Um, you could certainly do that multiple ways in your calculator, but the most straightforward way, the way that this says, is putting in the fraction 1 half at times 9. But what I don't like with that is that it gives me a fraction answer, 9 halves, yeah. Um, so a lot of students hate fraction answers. So by pressing the quick convert button on your calculator, it looks like this you can convert that into a decimal, and you'll see that's the same as 4.5. Uh, so 1 half times 9, or 1 half of 9, is 4.5. So I put the 1 half and the 9 together. I use those numbers up, but I haven't used the h yet, so it drops. And now I'm done simplifying. If you notice, there are no operations to perform on the left. That's just a number. The only operation on the right here is multiplication, but I don't know what 4.5 times h is. h is a mystery number. And so it is time uh, to start solving. We're done simplifying. Time to start solving. Time to start working to isolate the variable. Get the letter alone. Okay, so 4.5 and h we said we're multiplying. Well, when we're solving, we move backwards. So I'm going to divide by 4.5. Now, the basic rule of algebra is I can do whatever I want to one side of an equation as long as I do it to the other. That's solving. So I keep my balance by dividing by 4.5 over there as well. Now let's see what happens. On this side, multiplying and dividing by 4.5 are opposites. They cancel, so I'll be left with h. And on that side, there's the math to do. Plug it into your calculator. 30 divided by 4.5 is... Ugly. I didn't mean to have it be so ugly. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, but apparently it's ugly anyway. I didn't do any of my math wrong. Okay, so I get about 6.66. And not only is it ugly, it's like 666. Okay, you guys, did I give you any directions about? I didn't. So you know what? Let's do a quick convert. I'd rather have this as a fraction than a decimal. Let's just say h is equal to 20 over 3. I, I don't like rounding decimals unless I've been told to, so what I pressed on my calculator was the quick convert button to turn my decimal into a nice neat fraction, and you're like, I don't know what to do with fractions. That's okay. You just leave it right there. That's the answer. H is equal to uh, 20 over 3. Great. I should probably work these problems out beforehand instead of solving them cold and coming up with mysteries. But hey, this is what happens to you guys, and you're not sure what to do either, so... We might as well walk through it together. Okay, let's look at the other one that was messing with her. Uh, a squared plus 22 squared is equal to 27 squared. This one, uh, things like this come up a lot when you're utilizing the Pythagorean theorem. Um, we see these squares and such. So again, remember that great uh, wisdom principle 
Again, this is a wisdom principle, not a hard and fast rule, but I recommend simplifying before you start solving. Doing any forwards work you know how to do. And look, there's some things we know how to do here. We know how to square numbers. There's 27 squared. There's 22 squared. No letters involved in all. We could totally do that. So remember that 22 squared means the same as 22 times itself. So you could type in your calculator, you could type 22 times 22. Or you can use the square button. You'll get the same answer. 22 and then you just type, it says x squared. So that's what I'll do because I'm lazy. And I get 484. 22 squared is 484. Same thing with 27. If I type 27 and then the x squared button then enter, I get 729. Now remember to drop down whatever you haven't used. So we didn't, we used the 22 squared, it's gone in the 27 squared, but we should still see that equal sign, that plus, and that a squared. Cool. Now, I'm out of simplifying that I know how to do. Um, if you take a look at the right-hand side, there's no operations over there. It's just a number, so nothing to do. If you take a look at the left-hand side, there's two operations, but I can't do either. How can I square a when I don't know what a is? That's impossible. And I cannot add if terms are not like. I cannot add a sum number of a squareds with a plain old regular number. So I can't do either of those operations. So it is time to start solving. It is time to start getting rid of numbers. And again, we do that by doing the opposite. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 44 by minusing 44. I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So I duplicate that on the other side so that I'm subtracting 484 from both sides. Now let's see what my new equation will be after making that change. On this left-hand side, adding 484 and subtracting 484 are opposites. They'll cancel. The only thing I'll be left with is this a squared. And on this right-hand side, there's the math to do. 729 minus 484, and I get 245. I'm almost done now, but it is time to get that a alone, and that a is not quite alone. Take a look. See that square? I've got to get rid of square. In order to get rid of square, you have to remember what the opposite of square is. Remember that the opposite of add is subtract. The opposite or inverse of multiply is divide. And the opposite or inverse of square is square root. I am going to square root the left-hand side of my equation. You say, can I do that? I say, sure, as long as you do it to both sides. Jump across the equal sign, square root the right-hand side as well. And let's take a look at what happens now. Square and square root are opposites, so they cancel. A is alone like I wanted. And now the square root of 245 is... Uh, maybe this is why she didn't like this. She wasn't sure if her answer was correct. I get 7 square root of 5. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.